Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, first of all, big shout out to my postman who's still out and about making all of his deliveries. He did throw my parcels at me from about 10 yards away, but that's understandable. What we have here is a Radeon R9 Fury from AMD. Launched in 2015 as a competitor to Nvidia's GTX 980, this $569 or £450 high-end graphics card not only gave the aforementioned 980 a good run for its money, but it even kept the 980 Ti on its toes at higher resolutions, though ultimately the R9 Fury X was better suited to that job. With 4 gigs of HBM or high bandwidth memory, 3584 shading units and a 275 watt TDP, this card wasn't just powerful, it was power hungry. But you probably already knew that once I had mentioned R9 and AMD in the same sentence. The version I have here, which was a mystery until it arrived with me this morning, is the Sapphire Nitro 3 fan card. I think all of these actually sport a 3 fan design, except of course from the liquid cooled model. These are absolutely huge cards that really require a spacious system, or you know, you could go for the R9 Nano to alleviate that issue, which I think is a little weaker performance wise, but it does use less power and it's more convenient if you have a smaller enclosure. I'm testing the R9 Fury at 1080p and 1440p today, and I've targeted 60fps as this was once a card capable of doing that with ease. At the end we might take a couple of games that I have looked at and then test them at 4k just for a bit of fun as well. You'll notice throughout that this Sapphire version also stays fairly cool, so despite all the heat jokes you might hear, this one only touches the mid 60s temperature wise. It's also quite quiet. Let's start then with Forza Horizon 4. The footage you see here is from the 1080p tests but I'll put the 1440p results on screen as well as I talk about the performance. Forza was playable at both 1080p and 1440p with the high preset. There is an option that allows the game to optimize things as it sees fit as you play and I would recommend trying that before messing around with things because it might surprise you. It's a very inclusive game when it comes to hardware so you're going to have a great time racing around the narrow British roads and many fields of sheep. Next up it's Fallout 4 which is an older game but it gives you an idea of how a title from the same year that this graphics card released will perform. It's capped to 60fps to avoid bugs and whatnot so I don't really see a reason to uncap it and at both 1080p and 1440p performance was very similar in terms of the 1% and 0.1% lows. These figures were of course slightly lower at 1440p which is to be expected of course. Honestly, this game doesn't look too different at higher than it does at Ultra, so that might be a good option if you want to iron out a few of those admittedly nearly non-existent frame drops. Far Cry 5 also gave us no issues at both 1080p and 1440p. I had planned on testing things at 1080p with certain settings and then adjusting said settings in order to still achieve over 60, but that hasn't been necessary yet and simply switching the resolution has still given us great results. It's also a good time to mention the price of these cards used. I paid £115 here in the UK, which apparently was quite a good price. It can be a hard to find GPU though, which isn't the case with Team Green's 980, a card that is very easy to find at a decent price. Back to the game and at high, we were seeing no issues. Well, except for one minor freeze that's responsible for this 0.1% low, but that's about it. The rest of my time in this game was fairly issue free. So on to Red Dead Redemption 2. Here is where we had to make a few adjustments at 1440p. Firstly though, let's talk about 1080p. With the first balanced preset, we saw 63 FPS on average after running the in-game benchmark test. Away from busy areas, the overall frame rate will increase, but cities like Saint Denis or the sleepy town of Valentine will have a negative effect on the numbers. At 1440p then, we had to drop the settings to the lowest preset, though I did set the textures to ultra, which in turn meant a 58 frames per second average. So close to 60, but not quite. 
So far 60 hasn't been that hard to hit and if 30 FPS is more your cup of tea then you will have no issues at all with a card like this. The Resi 3 demo wasn't too challenging but I thought I'd throw it in nonetheless as it is a lot of fun and ideal for lower end systems. As you can see both Full HD and 1440p gave us very playable frame rates so even 2160p should be more than doable. The same goes for Forza actually. Whether this will differ from the final game and by how much is yet to be known at the time of this video, but I don't think it's going to be a dramatic difference by any means. It's more likely to be next to identical if the area layout is the same, that is. The Outer Worlds ran okay as well. There were a few frame drops represented by the horrible 0.1% lows, but 1080p and 1440p medium was okay, and both resolutions meant a 60fps average, at least at 1920 by 1080 The drops tended to occur when we were entering or leaving towns, so it's nothing really major, it just seems to happen as the textures and scenery loads in. So far, the Fury still seems to be capable of 60fps gaming, but let's take a quick look at PUBG as well before messing around with 4K. Again, at both resolutions, things ran fine. There was quite a big difference between 1080p and 1440p in terms of the frame rate results, but this could be due to a number of factors like different locations, for example. Either way, 60fps plus is certainly possible with this card in a lot of games. So then, let's see what this card can do at 4K. To test this, I took one of the easiest games to run today, Forza Horizon 4, and one of the most intensive, Red Dead Redemption 2, and then adjusted the settings to a level that I feel would be the best way to play. In Forza Horizon 4, first of all, at 2160p, medium was the best way to go to achieve a 60 frames per second average. I didn't run any software to determine the exact figures as, admittedly, this was an afterthought. 4K isn't what I'd recommend, but it turns out it is certainly doable. You know what, yeah. I would recommend it with Forza here if you don't mind a slight drop in visual quality. Medium does still look fantastic and you may have noticed I am running the demo here as it was quicker to download on my terrible internet, but it will run the same. I tested the Winter Race Performance too and while we did lose a few more frames, it was still a very enjoyable experience, a surprising one as well. I have mentioned before, in fact, not two minutes ago how well Forza Horizon 4 is optimised, so I guess it's not that surprising. Remember when I said that the temperature doesn't go much above 65? Well, make that 75 and that's what you can expect. The biggest surprise however, and an actual surprise in fact, was Red Dead Redemption 2. At 4K, we couldn't keep the texture quality at Ultra as the VRAM limit was exceeded. So rather than mess about with some settings, I decided to just change it to high as that was apparently allowed. And then I kept the rest of the game at the lowest preset. It does still look excellent and runs with about 30 to 35 frames per second. So you're getting better than current console frame rates with worse looking visuals. That is the beauty of PC gaming though, after all. Whether you want to play at 30 frames per second is entirely up to you, and thanks to the varied amount of settings, you can choose exactly what you want to get from this game and any other. Just like before, um, the figure will drop as you get nearer towns, but so far so good during the opening couple of levels. Overall then, 1080p or 1440p are definitely the best way to play, or should I say the most sensible way to play, um, when it comes to running most titles on the R9 Fury. I really like this card though, as big and inconvenient as it is cramming it into my small cooler master case, it does look good and matches my motherboard, so I can't complain. Furthermore, while the fans don't stop when the load is next to non-existent, they are totally unaudible. I wanted to mention that quickly as well. If you can find one, it may be a good choice. Just bear in mind that for around the same price, you can get a new GTX 1650 Super from Nvidia, which is apparently similar in performance according to a few people I've spoken to, but I think I'm going to have to test that out. 
But there we go. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one. I'm off to play some more Animal Crossing on the Switch. What a fantastic game. Um, just wanted to throw that in there as well. <laughs> Thank you and good night.